But the DFM doesn't have a MIDI input. It doesn't have a MIDI input. Oh my God. They did not put a MIDI input on it. There's no phalange. That's some bull. The Splint doesn't even have a phalange. So today I'm going to show you how to synchronize your DFM with your computer and your DAW without having to spend any money on extra external equipment. <laughs> the left phalange. Hey, welcome back to this brand new episode of 5 Minute DFM Patches. My name is Tills from the 16 Bar, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can synchronize your DFM with your computer. Now, if this is your first time on this channel and you would like to learn more about synthesizers or electronic music production in general, it will be very beneficial for you to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to make sure that you don't miss anything. And before we go any further, I have a question for you. If you've already figured out how to synchronize your DFM with your DAW, I would love for you to leave a comment in the comment section below because I'm very curious to know what other solutions there are out there. All right, so in order to synchronize the DFM with your DAW, we need to find a way to send a 16th note pulse, trigger or gate signal to the DFM's trigger or advanced clock input which would be fairly simple if we had a MIDI interface with a control voltage out that could take MIDI information coming from Ableton, translate it into control voltage and send it directly to the DFAM. So if you do own some sort of an external synth, a drum machine, a sequencer, or any sort of other hardware synthesizer that can communicate with your DAW via USB and MIDI and has the capability to relay those messages in control voltage format to your DFM, which would basically constitute either a gate or a trigger out, then you're pretty much all set. In that case, all you need to do is synchronize this external gear with your DAW and then use its gate or trigger outputs to send the 16th note information to the DFM. But that's not why we are here today. Today I want to show you how to do this without having to purchase extra external gear. So in the first half of this video, we are going to go through a few connections and buttons on the DFAM. And then in the second half, we are going to jump into Ableton and I'm going to show you how to create this pulse, gate or trigger signal and how to get it directly to your DFAM. What you will need though is a sound card or an audio interface that is capable of sending out more than two channels of audio. So on top of your usual left-right stereo signal, it should have at least one extra audio output on it. And the only thing that you will actually need to buy is a cable such as this one, which is a quarter inch on one end and the one eighth inch on the other end. So let's go. Okay, so let's go through a few relevant buttons on the DFM. First and foremost, the trigger button. With the sequencer playback stop, pressing the trigger button will trigger the current sequencer step without advancing to the next step. This makes it simple to fine tune settings for a specific step, playing it as many times as needed while adjustments are made. So basically this trigger button, when you hit it, it triggers all three envelopes of the uh, DFM at their current settings at the current position within the sequence. Now if you change parameters, the advance button. With the sequencer playback stop, pressing the advance button will manually cycle to the next step of the sequence without triggering each note it passes. Okay, now let's look at the Apache Bay inputs that we are going to be using. There are actually two of them. First one is the trigger. This input will trigger all three DFM envelope generators at the currently selected sequencer step velocity level without causing DFM to advance to the next step in a sequence. This is very useful when connecting the DFM to an external sequencer. The next one and most important, and this is the one that we are going to be using, is the advance slash clock, which is sequencer step advance or clock input. This input allows the DFAM to be synchronized to an external clock source, such as another DFAM or a Mother32, or in our case, our very own DAW. When the input of a clock's rising edge is detected, the sequencer pattern is advanced by one step. In this mode, the tempo knob is ignored. This also takes a zero to plus five volt control voltage. So basically, once you have it set up to send the 16th note pulse signal from your Ableton, you're gonna use that signal coming out and you're gonna plug that into the advanced clock input. So now that we know which inputs and buttons we're gonna have to utilize to make this happen, we're gonna jump into Ableton and I'll show you how to get that pulse, trigger or gate to your DFAM. Now, just a quick heads up. I'm gonna be using Ableton Simpler in this video which is a very powerful Ableton stock instrument. 
And if you would like to learn more about that, I've created an entire playlist on the Ableton Simpler. So I'm going to throw a link right up here in one of these two corners, not sure which one, but it will be there for you so you can go and check it out. All right, here we go. Now that we're inside of Ableton, I'm going to show you how to create everything that's necessary to make this work. First and foremost, we are going to take one instance of the analog synthesizer and drop it on a uh, MIDI track. All we need is a square wave or pulse wave. So we're going to set this to a pulse wave. We're going to turn off all the filters, the other oscillator. We're going to go into the amp envelope. We're going to make sure that we have a consistent envelope with no attack and no release. And this is what that sounds like. Now, next step, what you're gonna have to do is record this pulse wave onto a audio track. So you're gonna open a new audio track. You're gonna set this audio track's input to resampling. You can solo analog track. Make sure both of these tracks are record enabled. And then you can play this note. It doesn't really matter what note it is. It can be any note and just start recording. You can either use a MIDI clip and draw one note in there, or you can just use an external keyboard or even your computer's keyboard. All right, so let's start recording. And that's all we need. That's actually perfect. Now we can get rid of the MIDI clip that we recorded because we won't be needing that. And we will only need a very short portion of this recorded waveform. So what I'm gonna do is select a short portion you hit ctrl j and this will consolidate it you can get rid of the rest now the reason we created this pulse wave because the defam eventually will be detecting this rising edge of this waveform so the next step you need to do is take a simpler open a new midi track and drop your simpler onto this midi track now we are going to take this recording that we consolidated and we are going to simply drag and drop it into the simpler even within simpler all you will need is one portion of the square or pulse wave make sure you start your playhead at the beginning of the sample and then bring up the end and this is all we need. Now, if you record enable this new MIDI track with the simpler on it and you play any notes, you're gonna get a very quick, very short burst of sound. And that's exactly what we all need. Now, next step, you're gonna have to send this sound out through your audio interface. So choose external out and choose whichever external output you are going to use that's coming out from your audio interface. And this is the reason why you're gonna need at least one extra audio output on your audio interface. So I'm gonna choose number one. And now this signal is being sent to the external world. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use that audio cable that I mentioned earlier, and I'm gonna connect one end of this audio cable to the corresponding external out on the audio interface, and the other end of it, we are going to connect to the DFAM's advanced slash clock input by the way, because this is another by the way moment. In case I'm going a bit too fast or I'm not doing the best job explaining how this whole thing works, what I'm gonna do once I'm done with this video, I'm going to package up this whole entire Ableton session. Then you can go to our website and download this whole package completely for free. And I'm gonna put a link in the description section below. We're not done yet. What you will need to do now is draw in a MIDI clip and you have to draw in one single legato note. Doesn't matter what pitch. The next thing that you're gonna need is to add an arpeggiator right before the simpler. And you have to set this to 1 16th note divisions. Now when you play this, you're sending a very short, very quick burst of audio to your DFEM, which eventually is going to be translated through your audio interface into control voltage. And once you introduce that to the DFAM's advanced slash clock input, you've created the trigger that the DFAM needs to have its own sequencer synchronized to your DAW. Now, there are a few things that may or may not be needed in order to make this work, and that is because the DFAM's trigger input is calibrated to a certain voltage, which is zero to plus five volts. Now, how can you adjust that? The simplest way to adjust that is just use the volume control on the simpler and you're gonna have to play around with it because if this audio signal that you're sending out to the DFAM's trigger input is too loud, you're gonna get multiple triggers and if it's not loud enough, it's just not gonna work at all. So play around a little bit with that. Now in order to make this useful in Ableton, you're gonna want to be able to capture the audio coming out of your DFAM and the way you do that, you open another audio track, you set the external in to whichever input of your sound card or audio interface your DFAM's audio output is connected to. Number 13 in my case, you have to enable this track 
and now when you hit play in Ableton, you're gonna have the DFM audios coming back into your Ableton, which is now tempo synchronized. Let's pair this with a drum pattern. And here we go, you can change the BPM. You can even apply effects to it with an Ableton. Or just record it and use it later on for chopping up. So to recap everything again, you have to send a 16 note trigger signal to your DFM from your computer. Use Ableton's analog to create a pulse wave, record the pulse wave, put that pulse wave into a simpler, put an arpeggiator behind the simpler and set it to 16 note division. Send the audio from the simpler's track to the external world. Use the cable I was mentioning before to connect your audio interface to the DFAM's advanced clock input. Set the volume of simpler to make sure that the DFAM gets triggered properly. Remember, too loud, multiple triggers, not loud enough, it just won't work. Then to capture the audio that comes from DFAM, open a new audio track in Ableton, set its input to the external input that corresponds with the input that your DFAM is connected to, and you're done. And I have Baymax back there with a tiny owl. Now, if you have any questions at all, leave that in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer everything I can. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. And if you like what you saw here and if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. And also, don't forget to check out our website because that's where you'll find the free download for this Ableton session and I'm going to put a link in the description section below. And if you're interested in more DFAM videos, make sure to check out the rest of this playlist. Now that we're done here, I'm going to say bye, but don't go too far because the next video is right around the corner. Ciao.